Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Learn with Anirudh. Now this is going to be a very interesting one because here we're going to be discussing the top five Python projects that you should add to your resume for the year 2022. I know all of you guys are super excited for this. So what are we waiting for? Let's get started. So coming on to the first project that you guys could add to your resume is something called a Sudoku solver. Now Sudoku is a puzzle that I'm sure that a lot of you all know about it. You might have seen it in the newspapers and some of you might even be able to solve it. Now it's a very simple fun puzzle to solve and the best part here is that you might be thinking hey what's the advantage of adding a puzzle to my resume that it uses something called as a backtracking algorithm. Now, if you have ever played Sudoku or if you have ever tried to solve it, you, you have to understand that sometimes it's a trial and error process wherein you try to add a number, you see if it works, if it works, you keep it, else you go back and try another number. So we have something called as a backtracking algorithm where the algorithm reverts to the previous steps in case if you have arrived at a valid solution or not. And this is going to be a very simple challenge yet at the same time, it's going to add a lot of value. Now, this is only possible if you have a valid Sudoku puzzle to solve and the best part here is there is a lot of room for improvement. Now, instead of just solving the Sudoku puzzle, you can actually add a graphical user interface to it and make sure that you actually have the game that you see on the screen and let the users play the game. That's going to add a lot of value and a lot of hiring managers will appreciate your skill for logic, your application of the backtracking algorithm and your ability to create the graphical user interface as well. So it's definitely a very good project that you should consider for your resume. Now after the Sudoku solver, the next project that you should work on is something called as a content gatherer. Now content gatherers are these projects wherein we understand that in today's world of data, where we're trying to analyze, where we're trying to process a lot of data, of course, you bring in the data from multiple different channels multiple different platforms and all of these data engineers, they store it in their SQL databases. They find a structured way to store it and use it. Be it for data analysis, be it for something else in the world of data science, correct? Now the best part here is that this will showcase your interests in the ability to uh, work in the domain of data engineering, your ability to work in the domain of data analysis and fetching information from multiple sources and bringing it into one place will save a lot of time, be it for you or be it for your future employer as well. So a common way to, you know, bring all the data together, which you might have seen yourself is uh, think about the Google feed. Think about the news feed. So if you are a person who's only into sports, if you're a person who wants your news to be very specific, you can actually find, you can write code to make sure that you can pick up only those specific types of news that you would love to listen to or you would love to see or whatever it is and bring it into a dashboard, bring it into an application. And this will showcase your interest of having structured access to data, not just for your entertainment purposes. Also, this will help the future employers figure out that you are very good in terms of gathering data. So a content gatherer is a very simple project, yet at the same time, it can add a ton of value to your resume. Now, after the content gatherer, the third project that you could work on is something called as a desktop assistant. Now, a desktop assistant is very simple. You guys might have used uh, Siri, you might have used Alexa, and if you guys use Windows machines, you might have used Cortana as well. So it is a general assumption that people think that it is very, very difficult to have your own implementation of Siri or Alexa or something like that. Let me tell you that it is not complicated at all. These days, chatbots are extremely popular. Any service-based company, product-based company that you look at, majority of their customer support responses are now chatbots. You actually talk to a bot and only when your issue is not possible to be resolved by the bot, that is when you actually talk to a human representative. Until then, there's a good chance you might not even know that you're talking to a bot. So this is an extremely popular offering regardless of the domain that you're getting into. And the best part here is that there is a lot of demand for it, number one. Number two is that it is very easy to code. With the help of natural language processing, a little bit of machine learning and applied artificial intelligence, even freshers, even beginners who are into the domain who are just getting started with Python, you guys can definitely spend some time, add it to your resume, add it to your project stronghold, and eventually you can have a lot more features as well. Think about it. 
you have a chatbot which can play uh, which can have a song player which can give you weather updates and it can automatically even reply to mails on your behalf if you showcase all of this in one application and put it on your resume i definitely believe that hiring managers are going to be impressed you don't have to open up spotify anymore or click a couple of buttons to do it you just say hey chatbot you can give your chatbot a name and you can just say hey chatbot open up spotify and play this particular song and boom it's done so having this kind of an ability to create your own desktop assistant is going to take you a long way especially in the year 2022 Now after the desktop assistant the next project that you guys can consider working on is something called as a stock price prediction algorithm now here in the case of a stock price predictor the best part here is that is some people will tell you that it is impossible to predict the prices of stocks and shares now i would agree to it to a certain extent but at the end of the day if you feed enough data you know a ton of data is available with all the share prices and everything if you feed a ton of data to your machine learning algorithm Today we have algorithms which are super powerful enough to understand the minute bits and pieces of what it takes to rally a stock, what it takes to short a stock, and eventually give you fair enough predictions. And if you can go about doing it, it will showcase your ability to use neural networks, to use machine learning, and this will help your resume stand out. So I think this is a very important project that you guys can take a look at. And if you're wondering about, hey, okay, so I want to do this, but where is all the data that I can use? There are multiple data sets available for free on the internet for training purposes for testing your algorithms and bringing your accuracy to a good enough degree. And it's it's one good thing that you can predict the stock prices. It's another amazing thing to actually create a very small dashboard to showcase the prices of the stocks and the shares in a small neat and a clean looking graph. That's going to be very elegant and that's going to also showcase your other important skills. your communication skills your ability to convey a complex concept and break it down into simple stuff and at the end of the day it's an all in all it's a round project which will give you complete knowledge complete expertise and when a person who's screening your resume for the first time looks at it trust me it definitely is going to be pretty impressive to them and then the next project that you can consider working on is something called sentiment analysis any product based company that you take a look at in today's world will perform sentiment analysis in one way or another let's be very honest if you're a company who is selling a product and you have, you just went viral you just sold millions of products hundreds of thousands of products or whatever it is of course people will go on the internet they will rate the product they'll put in their reviews and all of that now it is not possible for a person to sit and read through the entire uh, you know 300000 400000 reviews to find out which customer is angry which customer is sad who's happy who's not but if you have a sentiment uh, analysis uh, chain set up there you can have algorithms which will automatically scan through your reviews and find the sentiment of the people are they happy with your product are they angry about your product are they sad are they suggesting any changes so you can find out all of these automatically and if you're a person who can say hey give me 10 million reviews i'm going to give you the sentiment to all of that definitely people will be interested and it doesn't just have to be product reviews if something is trending on twitter we know that there's a lot of stuff that uh, trends on twitter right so if you want to find a topic there and if you want to make sure and you want to assess what's going on there you can do that and this will take you a long way in establishing an application to a product and at the same time you're definitely going to be impressing your hiring manager by showcasing your ability to pick up a large data set work with it with ease and then eventually build up on that so sentiment analysis is a very good project that you guys can consider working on in python and again the best part here is that there are a ton of libraries both in the python programming language and in the r programming language as well that will help you not just get to your result but visualize it and help you communicate it better now having snippets of these and showcasing your results is going to add a lot of value to your resume so now that we've taken a look at the top 5 projects let's quickly wrap it up the first important point that i want to tell you all uh, on all you learners who are looking forward to picking up python projects especially to showcase your ability is that my first advice is find your favorite domain and pick up problems from that don't just do projects because of the sake of it find what is your favorite domain find out what are the problems that exist in that domain and eventually start producing creative results because in the year 2021 itself we realized that a lot of people hiring for python developer roles or any roles which involved python 
they were looking for creative programmers rather than the mundane the usual programmer so your ability to showcase creative solutions your ability to you know put in logic in multiple different ways your ability to solve one problem in multiple different ways is exactly what is required in the year 2022 and it is very easy today you have multiple trends that are being created day in and day out and if you just observe what is happening in data science if you observe what is happening in web development for python if you are interested in that you will find out what are the new tools what are the new techniques and what are the problems that are surfacing that people are trying to solve once you latch on to a problem and once you give your creative solution to that trust me it will have a lot of impact on the potential hirers looking at your resume and another important thing i want to mention here is that when a lot of people that i have seen uh, who in fact uh, you know have watched my previous videos on python projects and everything you guys tend to mention your projects as is don't do that whenever you are trying to showcase your project it is basically you telling that hey i picked up a problem and i solved it so instead of just mentioning the name of the project that you have done write a sentence or two there talking about the value addition that you have had in the application of it instead of instead of just putting the name just tell about the problem that you tried to solve and how you solved it and if you have space in your resume one or two challenges that you faced during this project can add value as well that shows that you are trying hard enough and that shows that your creative abilities show through as well so this is something which is very important uh, make sure that you guys are picking your favorite domains make sure you are analyzing the market trend and working on those projects and the third thing is when you are showing your resume to a potential hiring manager don't just put in the name of the project because they will have no idea what it is that you achieved with that project so put in what it is that you did what problem it is that you solved and definitely everyone is going to be impressed that way and with this i know that a lot of you all are super excited for all the content that is coming your way so to make sure you don't miss any further episodes of learn with anirudh do take a second to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon this way as soon as i put out a new episode you guys will be the first ones to be notified of the same so with that guys hit to the comment section let me know what project impressed you the most and let me know what projects that you guys are working on so again thank you for tuning in i'll see you really quickly on the next episode have a nice day cheers